We gather in worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you to St. James Church on this, the feast of our patron. Unfortunately, this year with the COVID-19 lockdown, we are few in number in the church building, but are many sharing in this service online. Today we are pleased to have as our preacher the Reverend Dr. Erica Matheson, who is a former deacon assistant in this parish and ongoing friend to us all. So welcome. Being a special day, we take the opportunity to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and worship, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. It is upon their ancestral lands that St. James Church is built. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us then run our race, laying aside every weight and bringing our sins to the Lord in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Our Maker maker and our our Judge, we have have sinned sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O gracious God, whose apostle James left his father and all that he had, and without delay obeyed the call of your Son, Jesus Christ. Pour out upon the leaders of your church the same spirit of self-denying service, by which alone they may have true authority among your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. A reading from the book Jeremiah. The word that the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Baruch, son of Neriah, when he wrote these words in a scroll at the dictation of Jeremiah in the year, the fourth year of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judea. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, Baruch. You said, woe is me. The Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. Thus you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, I am going to break down what I have built and pluck up what I have planted, that is, the whole land. And you, do you seek great things for yourself? Do not seek them. For I am going to bring disaster upon upon all flesh, says the Lord. But I will give you your life as a prize of war in every place to which you may go. For the word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and predicted that the Spirit was there 
would be a severe famine up over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. For the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in the kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, 
And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. For the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is the feast day of St. James, patron saint of vets, tanners, pharmacists, oyster fishers, and woodcarvers and of this church, this building here in the heart of the city, and us, the community, that today is scattered across Sydney and beyond in our lockdown lounge rooms and studies. And yet we are still a community, gathered in spirit, gathered in the spirit, and together, thanks to modern technology and the internet. Today we celebrate James, son of Zebedee, and one of Jesus' inner group of Peter, James and John. And we celebrate this community and all those over the years who've contributed to its life in big ways and small ways, in leadership, or by simply being present with faithful prayer. We give God thanks for all those who've made and still make it possible for us to worship and grow in grace and love and explore our faith here. And this being our patronal festival, I want to explore what James can teach us about being disciples now. I want to draw on today's gospel reading. With all its awkwardness, it is one of those glittering gems of the gospel tradition where the writer, Matthew, offers us insight into the deep meaning of Jesus' mission and death and what salvation looks like in our lives. The passage is awkward. The brothers are brazen. James and John, in the person of their mother, draw Jesus aside and ask him for the seats of honour and power in his kingdom. Matthew plainly tries to ease the embarrassment of their self-promotion because in his cut and paste, he changes Mark's earlier version. There, James and John ask Jesus directly. Matthew blames the mother, even though she is absent from the rest of the conversation. I don't know about you, but the bare-faced self-seeking makes me squirm. But there's more here than a lesson in humility. Jesus has just announced his coming death. It is the third time and with greatest detail. 
he will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. Every authority, secular and religious, Jewish and Gentile, there will be no escape. And it won't be just any death, but one that degrades and humiliates and defiles. And Jesus goes up to Jerusalem knowing and choosing in absolute abandonment to God. And James and John ask about positions of power and privilege. It's a fascinating insight into the dynamics of the disciple group, how they see Jesus as a Messiah King, interested in power like they are, and how they are rivals, competing with one another for Jesus' favour. Matthew puts his finger right on the problem. The vision that Jesus is putting to the disciples about God, about Jesus' own mission, they can't bear. That God's power is utterly unlike the power of human empire is beyond them. They think of hierarchies and glory. The idea that Jesus is heading for failure and shame and them along with him is too much. The paradigm shift is too great. We maybe think the paradigm shift not so strange, perhaps because of this passage and 2,000 years of Christian tradition. We'd feel uncomfortable pushing ourselves forward as crudely as James and John, and especially at the expense of our friends. But I wonder, if we are really so different and just as far from the dynamic of Jesus' self-giving? Who of us has never craved other people's admiration and approval? Who of us has never been tempted to compete or manipulate to avoid failure and missing out? And haven't we all felt the cold fear of being humiliated and rejected and avoided it at all cost. We may not be as brazen as the brothers, but the dynamic is the same. We source our value, our security, our sense of who we are in being recognized and admired and having and achieving. And this is what Jesus is one to shift in us, a different ground to stand on, as Canberra-based theologian Sarah Bachelard puts it, a different way to be that enables a different way of being together. You know, Jesus says, that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. It's human empire. Jesus has seen the Roman governor all pomp and spectacle. He knows centurions with the power of life and death. He's seen the poor serving the rich and the weak serving the strong. He's seen exclusion and exploitation and oppression. And is the world so different now? The pandemic has exposed fault lines in society and the world that are like deep wounds in the fabric of of humanity. One journalistic wit wrote about the jabs and the jab knots, a fault line that runs between rich and poor nations. And there are the fault lines around being aged or indigenous or a refugee or having a disability or casualized work. Patterns of exclusion, of disadvantage, 
of people unable to thrive because of conflict and oppression. And Jesus says, it will not be so among you. Among you there will be inclusion rather than exclusion, cooperating rather than competing. There will be giving rather than getting, sacrifice rather than self-seeking. The great among you will be servant. The first among you will be slave. Because, Jesus says, that is how he is. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. It's not that Jesus ceases to be powerful. He is powerful and authoritative. But Jesus does not have to seek power for its own sake. He owns the power he has in love and self-giving. And Jesus would have us free to do the same. Matthew's word for Jesus' mission and death is ransom. The word has launched a thousand atonement theories but Matthew isn't interested. He doesn't explain. His point is that Jesus giving his life out of love is the power that can set us free from needing to make ourselves significant, free to love and serve as Jesus did. It's the power that set James free because today's gospel passage is not the last word scripture has to say about James. We heard it in our second reading. James does drink the cup of, that Jesus drank, suffering death at the hands of Herod in about 44. James had come to find the love of God in Jesus so compelling that he could trust himself to it, even to death. And that is the invitation to us. So here it is. We are to trust God and serve one another in self-giving because that is how Jesus is. And what about God? Is God also like this? Not seeking to be served but to serve and to give and give. We're so used to thinking about God as almighty, all-powerful, before whom groveling and servitude are the proper response. But the good news of Christian faith is that Jesus, loving, serving, self-giving, shows us what God is like. As John V. Taylor said, there is no unchristlikeness. In God. Jesus' whole life and mission was to show us, embody for us this God who is love, extravagant, prodigal, infinite, unconditional, love we can trust to hold us and be for us and always be with us. And it is in trusting that love that enables us to shift from being self-centered, self-interested, self-protective. Our lives, our identities, our worth are God's gift, given and held in God's keeping. This is the ground Jesus wants us to stand on, the different way to be. We need only trust. sounds so simple. But if you're like me, the grip of old patterns is hard to shift. Just last week, old anxieties of not being good enough opened up like an abyss out of my past to be grappled with again. I wonder what your hurt is. 
what grabs you and flips you into grounding your identity and security in something other than the love of God. But even here, the gospel story helps us. Look at Jesus. He doesn't reject the brothers or distance himself. He's not interested in who sits where. He's interested in them, that they follow his, Jesus' way of self-giving that leads to life. Jesus deals with the brothers with gentleness. And when we're struggling, stuck in life-denying patterns of one sort or another, Jesus doesn't reject us or distance, but is with us with gentleness. And sometimes all we can do is hold our pain, our wound, in the love of God and wait until it shifts. It's the only way I know, the only way to transformation, paying attention to God, to love, holding ourselves before it, eating it, drinking it, meditating on it, until it becomes the new ground within. So to our St. James community lockdown, here is the task, to hold ourselves and one another in the love of God and serve each other. It's a bit hard to think of how in a lockdown when one of the main ways is by not going out. But we can still look out for others with the internet and phone calls and prayer. We can still be there for each other as we seek to grow in grace and love, finding a different way of being together because we have found a different ground on which to stand. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. Shield the church from all ambition and love of power. Give grace to clergy and lay ministers who have been called to change their lives and follow their Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give the spirit of humility to a world where there are many seeking for the chief places and for power over others. Bring peace among nations and harmony between races and faiths. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us all in our appointed tasks and help us to, be, to praise you through faithful work. Be with those who have left their families to begin their own lives and hold them together in the spirit of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all whose ambition has led them into evil ways. We pray for all those whose lives are consumed by envy, that they may find contentment in loving service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those of our fellow pilgrims who are sick. Mother Elaine Farmer, Rhonda Fay, Warren Trevelyan Jones, Fred Orr, Thomas Alvisio, Candace Chandler, Joan Hillier, the Reverend David Johnson, Father Gary Priest, Janice McIntyre, Elizabeth Farry, Stephen Bell, David, Peter Harper, David Cheatham, Paula Beam, and Janet Chalia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have followed their Lord in this world and in this place and have gone to their rest. We pray for those who have died recently, Christina Papadopoulos, and for those whose anniversaries fall at this time. May their place be blessed, may, may their place be with blessed James and all who have been his disciples. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Holy Father, as the saints offer their lives for the sake of the kingdom, receive the bread and wine we offer you in sacrifice. Strengthen our resolve to serve you, that our pilgrimage of faith may lead to the life of eternity. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honor be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks because you have called us into the fellowship of James and all your saints and set before us the example of their witness and the fruit of your Spirit in their lives. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus is the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God of courage. We give you thanks for this holy food, and we praise you for your martyr, James the Great, who ran with perseverance the race that was set before him, and won the victor's wreath that does not fade. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, greetings to everyone who has joined us online today for our Festival of St. James. Unfortunately, with the COVID restrictions, small in number in the church, as we say, but we know that many of you are celebrating with us today as a community scattered far and wide. Particularly a great joy to have with us the Reverend Erica Matheson today as our preacher and as a former staff member of this parish and parishioner and uh, a person who's been, uh, one who's contributed in many ways to the history and life of this place. Supposedly the COVID-19 lockdown is set to end this Friday. I don't believe it will and I suspect it will be extended but once details are clearer, I will send out a pastoral letter later this week. The Patronal Festival, which of course is a weekend full of activity, uh, has not proceeded as we had planned, um, but we are looking at postponing our celebrations until the weekend of the 9th and 10th of October, which is our newly created dedication festival. Uh, it, it will be the, at that time, the 202nd anniversary of the laying of the foundation stone of this church. And so hopefully a sufficient number of people will be vaccinated by that stage and we will be out of lockdown and we will be able to celebrate in the traditional manner. Please note that the mid-year studies on the Gospel of Mark continue this week online and today at two o'clock the St James Day talk will take place, uh, the speaker being Professor Ray Nobbs on the Melanesian mission and there will be a response to his talk by the Reverend Dr John Dean, the Executive Director of the Anglican Board of Mission. I also draw your attention to uh, the need to support our music ministry here at St James. Despite the current restrictions that we have and the delays to the organ project because of the fire at the Dobson workshop in Iowa, music still goes on and is an important part of our life here at St James and will return in a more fulsome way uh, once the current restrictions come to an end. We're still planning on holding orchestral masses in January and there will still be the need to support the choral and organ scholarships and of course we will be proceeding with the installation of the new organ even if it is going to be finished later than planned. So I draw your attention to the last pages of our service booklet and the donation form for the St James Foundation as a means of supporting these activities along with other aspects of the life of St James. Would you please consider? Would you please stand?
May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of James and all the martyrs and saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their inheritance. Amen. May he strengthen you on your pilgrimage in the way of holiness. And may you come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And the blessing of the most holy and life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.